What's up, YouTube family? This is Leah Boone with Monarch Ministries. Welcome to the channel. So, uh, I'm like, I just want to get through the intro. <laughs> so, the Lord was like, um, he took me to Proverbs 31. And everybody knows, this is a pretty famous uh, chapter of the Bible. It's the It has the virtuous wife in it. But my attention was drawn to the first part of chapter 31, where it was talking about, it was an utterance from King Lemuel's mother telling him what kind of king to be. I'm going to read it real quick and then um, give some commentary that, you know, me and the Lord, you know what I'm saying? So, my, what my son and what of my womb and what son of my vows, do not give your strength to women nor your ways to that which destroys kings. She was just saying, um, you're a king. You cannot, um, like, like Samson did, you know, or, um, like, um, David did or, um, Solomon. I mean, all of these kings, was Samson a king? I don't know, but he, uh, gave all his power to a woman. Anyways, um, there are women throughout the Bible that were uh, really deceiving and that um, made men, great men of valor, um, sin, right? So she was saying, you know, don't, don't um, be taken by women's ways because there are women who will seduce you. You know, you need to concentrate on the more important things. And it says, um, it says, it is not for kings, O Lemuel, it is not for kings to drink wine nor for princes intoxicating drink, lest they drink and forget the law and pervert the justice of all the afflicted. Give strong drink to him who is perishing and wine to those who are bitter of heart. Let him drink and forget his poverty and remember his misery no more. Open your mouth for the speechless and the cause of all who are appointed to die. Open your mouth judge righteously and plead the cause of the poor and the needy. So I, I had, um, posted a word about this, like back in last summer about, um, homeless people and how, um, people, I like, I noticed that people were just driving by the homeless people and they weren't, you know, giving the homeless anything in Dallas. And I felt like it had gotten worse. Like, I didn't know if, you know, what was going on, but it just seemed like nobody was caring anymore about their fellow man. And, um, when you're homeless, you know, it's almost impossible to not drink or be on drugs because being on the street is so awful. And that's kind of what it was talking about here. It's like, give wine to those who are bitter of heart and give strong drink to him who is perishing you know, and let him drink and forget his poverty. And so, um, people have asked me before, you know, is it a sin to, to drink or, or to, you know, to do drugs, to smoke, you know, all of these things. And, it, and it's not per, per se, like it's not a commandment of the Bible, but, um, the Bible does say, um, that we should be sober minded. And to do that, we have to stay off of, you know, drinking and, and drugs and, and alcohol and things like that, um, and smoking, you know, um, but, it, but she, she's, she, the, the mother of King Lemuel was giving him some words of wisdom because, and, and Jesus, you know, wants us to kind of model after this because, um, he's raising you up to be an influence to, to other people. And, um, he needs you to be in the best sound mind with good judgment, um, because he's going to be putting you in places where you're going to have to, um, help like the homeless, help the needy and things like that. And, and you're going to have to make judgment calls and, and all of these things. And he wants you to be in top condition. And so these things are not really, um, for the kings of Christ. Oh, my, my hair is getting on my nerves. I didn't fix it today. So, <laughs> um, so these are not for, um, his kings. And, um, 
any anyone can be a king. I mean, this was he was ministering this to me about me. Not today. Um, I mean, he led me to this. Um, I, he wanted me to talk about it, but um, he's led me to this before. And um, so I just wanted to drop this word and, and talk to you about what he was sharing with me. You know, it's not a sin per se to to do those things, but how are you going to be an effective member of the body of Christ if you are doing these things? Um, so it, it's just, if you are struggling with any addiction, um, my heart goes out to you because it's very difficult. Um, but I can say beyond a shadow of a doubt that I feel so much better and, um, I have so much more joy and peace and, and I'm so much happier, um, now that I don't do anything. I, you know, I, I was delivered from drugs and drinking back in January of 2022. And, um, I have not picked anything up since then that I got, I switched from smoking cigarettes to vaping. And I recently, you know, got delivered on my walk from vaping. And so now I don't have any of those vices. And it's kind of funny because, um, when I, I, you know, I quit vaping like for good, I was like, I was like, man, I don't have any vices. And it was so interesting how I was like, I, I felt like, and it's been really difficult. It's been very difficult. Like God has not, re I, I prayed to God, you guys, I prayed and I prayed for him to remove, remove the cravings, remove the you know, the want to do it because smoking was, was, it, it was, I, lo I liked it. Okay. And, but God was like, no, that that's, that's your thorn in your side. I'm not going to remove that because I want you to choose the good things for yourself, for your life that I want for you. I want you to choose to love me, choose to follow me and choose to put that stuff down, put it on the altar for me. And if it weren't for the Lord, if it weren't for the Lord, I would have never stopped. I, I would have smoked till the day I died. I'm serious. If I, even if I ever quit, you know, drugs and drinking, I still would have smoked cigarettes till the day I died. If it wasn't for Jesus, I didn't do that for any other reason. I remind him of it all the time. Like Jesus, I quit smoking for you. <laughs> like, like, you know, but then I found over time, I was like, I was like, I just feel like sometimes I felt like I needed like something else. Like I needed, like I was so used to being addicted to something for so many years, like my whole life, my whole life. I was, I was just used to being addicted to something. Like if I, you know, if I was in a situation or, you know, I was having an emotion or whatever, I'd just grab a cigarette, start smoking and, you know, and, and that's always, that always fixed everything. And I, you know, and the thing with my fingers and, and, you know, the, I mean, for 30 years, I am lucky I have teeth. Wow. But I started feeling like something was missing. And so I went into prayer and I'm like, Jesus, fill me up, fill me up. Cause I know you're not going to take this away from me. It's like my grace is sufficient for you, you know. But he does, and then he fills you up, and then, like, it just goes away because Jesus is all you need. He's all you need. I'm probably never going to Stop liking the smell of cigarettes. And I really believe it's like a thorn in my side. But every time I like. I'm really craving a cigarette real bad, you know, or something. Or I smell one. And I'm just like, oh, man. I'm like, Jesus, fill me up, fill me up. And he does, and he does. He's so, he's so faithful. 
And then he reminds me, like these verses here, he reminds me that he's got better plans for my life. That I'm not that person that I used to be. That I was created for something different. I just didn't know. I just didn't know what that was. And so I like created this other person that wasn't me. And I was living a lie. I was hiding, you know, behind that thing. But I adapted to it like... You know, I liked it, <laughs> but it's not me. Jesus is the answer to everything. That's it. I love you guys so much with the love of Christ. Y'all have a blessed Saturday. I mean, Sunday. <laughs> it's Sunday. It's Sunday evening. Okay, I love you all so much. Bye.